November 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 2 from the New Testament. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write the following. This is a solemn pronouncement of the one who has a firm grasp on the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works as well as your labor and steadfast endurance and that you cannot tolerate evil. You have even put to the test those who refer to themselves as apostles, but are not, and have discovered that they are false. I am also aware that you have persisted steadfastly, endured much for the sake of my name, and have not grown weary. But I have this against you. You have departed from your first love. Therefore, remember from what high state you have fallen, and repent. Do the deeds you did at the first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. That is, if you do not repent. But you do have this going for you. You hate what the Nicolaitans practice. Practices I also hate. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will permit him to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. To the angel of the church in Smyrna, write the following. This is a solemn pronouncement of the one who is the first and the last, the one who was dead but came to life. I know the distress you are suffering in your poverty, but you are rich. I also know the slander against you by those who call themselves Jews and really are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of the things you are about to suffer. The devil is about to have some of you thrown into prison so you may be tested, and you will experience suffering for ten days. Remain faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown that is life itself. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will in no way be harmed by the second death. To the angel of the church in Pergamum, write the following. This is the solemn pronouncement of the one who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan's throne is, yet you continue to cling to my name and you have not denied your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed in your city where Satan lives. But I have a few things against you. You have some people there who follow the teaching of Balaam who instructed Balak to put a stumbling block before the people of Israel so they would eat food sacrificed to idols and commit sexual immorality. In the same way, there are also some among you who follow the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore repent. If not, I will come against you quickly and make war against those people with the sword of my mouth. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give him some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and on that stone will be written a new name that no one can understand except the one who receives it. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, write the following. This is a solemn pronouncement of the Son of God, the one who has eyes like a fiery flame and whose feet are like polished bronze. I know your deeds your love, faith, service, and steadfast endurance. In fact, your more recent deeds are greater than your earlier ones. But I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and by her teaching deceives my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent but she is not willing to repent of her sexual immorality. Look, I am throwing her onto a bed of violent illness and those who commit adultery with her into terrible suffering unless they repent of her deeds. Furthermore, I will strike her followers with a deadly disease and then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches minds and hearts. I will repay each one of you what your deeds deserve. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, all who do not hold to this teaching, who have not learned the so-called deep secrets of Satan, to you I say, 
I do not put any additional burden on you. However, hold on to what you have until I come, and to the one who conquers and who continues in my deeds until the end. I will give him authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod, and like clay jars, he will break them to pieces, just as I have received the right to rule from my father, and I will give him the morning star. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God, in uh, Revelation 2, we see the first of four of the letters uh, go out by your messenger to the total of seven churches. And it's interesting, um, there's actually two churches of those seven that are doing good, um, that you commend them for what they're doing, and, and there's nothing bad that you're fussing at them about. And I know it doesn't mean that uh, they got it right all the time. It was Smyrna and Philadelphia who we'll hear about tomorrow. Um, it doesn't mean that they always got it right, but they were definitely on the track that you needed them to be as a church. Ah, but we see three of the four of the letters today say, gosh, you're doing really good in this, but boy, you're sure messing up in this area. <laughs> um, with Ephesus, we saw that they were really good at doctrine. Um, of understanding uh, your word and endurance of, of dealing with persecution but that almost seems a little bit uh, ironic to me because where you laid into them was about love and love as we know it from your commandments in the bible it's impossible for us to love other people if we don't first love you um, and understand that so it's almost like they were doing things because they were told they had to rather than from the heart. That's what Ephesus has always felt, uh, at least to me. Uh, then we go on to Smyrna, which was a, the second of the two, uh, second of the seven letters, and they are spiritually rich uh, and enduring, and uh, they. They are doing all the things right. There's nothing that you are calling into question right now. But you do give them a warning that they will be persecuted. And I think it's fascinating that out of at least these four, the only one we're seeing who receives a warning about persecution doesn't mean that the other four, won't, other three won't be persecuted. But the one who is actually doing things right, who is headed down the right path, is the one that the devil is interested in. And I always find that fascinating, that if we are doing what we're supposed to with you, God, that the devil will sure pay attention to that a lot more than somebody who's just living in this world for themselves. It's interesting to me because as we get to, towards the end of recording for this year for Daily Video Bible, um, a lot of things have suddenly started to go wrong, interestingly enough. And it just takes me straight back to Smyrna. We're being obedient. We're doing what we're supposed to do for Daily Video Bible. Um, you're showing its fruit and you're making sure it reaches who it needs to reach. But especially today, <laughs> I can definitely tell the devil doesn't want this project to be completed. Uh, and it's getting harder and harder and more sluggish to get through each day's recording uh, just because of tech situations or health situations or all sorts of interesting things. Um, so Smyrna, doing it right and definitely had the attention of the devil himself. Uh, Pergamum was holding fast to your name, upholding your name, uh, not denying their faith. Uh, they were very proud of you and, and who they were as Christians. Uh, but they also, interestingly enough, uh, had a problem with false teaching. It almost seems like the two can't go together, right? How in the world do you get to that point where you're not fearful of man, uh, you're more fear fearful of you, God, and uh, you're more than willing to tell other people your beliefs and stand up for them, uh, but you're also willing to dilute that and allow false teachings to be true in your life as well. And I see uh, Pergamum, I think, most clearly in our society today. 
we are Christians, we go to church, we read your word, we pray to you, we're all in different uh, spances of our walk with you. And then we allow people to say inappropriate things on Facebook. Um, we allow our friends to do inappropriate things and we, and we never help them with that walk. Uh, we hear someone say something against Christians or God or, or whatever, and, and we don't stand up for you in those situations. I think it is so easy in this world to be fearful of man over fearful of you. And that's definitely where false teachings start to happen, along with the idea that we idolize people. I'm thinking of some big TV preachers who also have written a ton of books, and um, our society idolizes them and allows that false teaching to come in because of their fame, uh, interestingly enough. So Pergamum to me is fascinating because it seems very much like our society today. And then Thyatira, uh, they were growing in that love which to me seems like a a startup church that's kind of the first things you need to tackle is figuring out love for others love for you god and then we don't need um, to do works to be saved but because of this passionate love and this new heart that you give us we want to do good works um, and good deeds and and be of service to you but where thyatira was missing it i think possibly too this part of this came from being a younger church is their lack of discernment uh, that they had the love part going down and um, the works from that love uh, of wanting to do things for you and for your people god but how they dealt with things wasn't always correct <laughs> they would uh, tolerate a lot of heresy uh, small problem right so each of these four letters of the seven that uh, we are reading about God are, are incredibly fascinating to me. These are all, even though you're talking to churches thousands of years ago, these are things that we deal with day in and day out. And it's a incredible reminder to look at our lives um, and make sure we're on track. Um, are we like Smyrna? Or are we like Thyatira? Are we like Ephesus? Or are we like Pergamum? Where are we in what is right and what is wrong about our lives? We can also, as uh, people who hold ministries, um, I'm honored and blessed to have Daily Video Bible as my ministry. We can take a look at our ministries and make sure that we're holding true to all of these things that you're pointing out to these churches as well. So even though you're writing these two churches, um, obviously, you put things in the Bible that allow us to learn as well. These are all excellent reminders of things we need to uh, keep in mind. That it's not uh, certain facets of our walk with you that are important, but the totality of our relationship with you. And, and holding up our lives, not to other Christians, but to the life that your son lived that that's what we should be constantly striving for, not just in a couple areas of our lives, uh, but in all areas of our lives. God, in your son's name, I pray. Amen.